All right, uh, hi YouTube. So uh, I'm gonna do a little follow-up on my first video that I did the other day about the inland elevations as uh, with regards to sea level and how they come up with the inland elevations without admitting that the uh, sea is level. So what I did is I actually had a two and a half hour conversation with a geodetic scientist yesterday on the telephone which was uh, pretty pretty interesting. Now, uh, I have to say, this was this guy was really, really nice and uh, patient and uh, didn't... Um, well, I had, to, I had to go through several people and exhausted their knowledge and uh, their cognitive dissonance was kicking in. I, for the first woman I talked to, I didn't get very far. I got to as far as, uh, you know, getting to, the, to the, the point of using line of sight surveying equipment which is all goes you know on level and she quickly said well that's a very good question but i have to refer you to somebody else who has more knowledge and to me this is just common sense i mean you know it's called sea level because it's level and if you're and if you're gonna if you're gonna figure out what the height of something is above sea level um you, you start at the sea and you work your way into whatever thing you're after. Zora, come on. Zora likes to chase the roosters. But, um, so, then she, then she gave me a few phone numbers. I talked to another guy. I got a little further along. And I was, I was talking about the 1908 USGS uh, benchmarks that I talked about the other day out in Wyoming and stuff when I was, when I was a rodman for the surveyor. And uh, he got to the point where, you know, I, I could tell his cognitive dissonance was kicking in because, you know, I was forcing him to think about, you know, because I asked him, you know, back in the day, compared to now, how close were those elevations that they came up with? Because he had already talked, talked he, was, or he had already told me about how that now they use satellites and they have this whole gravity thing that they, that they use, which I'll explain in a minute. And then I just started to say, well, how close were they? Did they have to redo all the elevation? He says, well, no. He says they were actually surprisingly close. And um, so as soon as I started mentioning how much curvature there should have been, because he was saying, well, they were they were usually within, you know, a matter of inches, you know. But um, so he he. He took me to another, gave me some more phone numbers, and I finally got this guy who, I, I left messages on about 10 people's message machines at different uh, geodetic and, and geological survey offices, and this was one guy left his cell phone number, and as of now, 24 hours later, not one of the other people has got back to me, but I called this guy's cell phone, and and he picked up and answered, and as it turned out, he was driving, driving a long drive, so I guess he was happy to have the distraction. And I ended up talking to the guy for like two and a half hours. And I have to say, he was a really, really nice guy, and uh, I think I planted some seeds of, of truth in in his brain. Now, I, I didn't, as the truth I planted, I don't think has any. I don't think he's going to challenge his concept of a globe Earth anytime soon. But I got him thinking about the moon landings and uh, the 9/11. Uh, controlled demolitions. So, now as far as when we were talking about how they how they surveyed their way back out to the Rocky Mountains and stuff back in the day, and we got to the point where you're going to find this, you know, pretty pretty ridiculous as I did. And you know, when I was talking to this guy, I didn't really push him too hard. You know, I didn't want to scare him off and and have him hang up on me. Um, so I kind of just played a little dumb and, and played like, you know, I, you know, I was just, I had run across these things on YouTube about flat earth and they're starting to make sense to me and can you help me understand how this works and everything. So, uh, we got to the point where, like I say, we were talking about surveying the way out to the Rockies and, you know, what sea level was and, and all that. Well... You know, I th he, uh, he slowly realized that I have that I really knew what I was talking about, and I had done a lot of research on this stuff.
because as soon as he would, first he tried to tell me, well, you know, they used to use like the mean sea level of 17 different points along the coast. And I said, well, that, I said, that, well, that's just high tide and low tide. And, and then I would bring up, then I brought up, you know, well, if the ocean is around, if we're on a globe, the ocean is curved because it's, it's wrapped around a globe. Um, how did they, you know, we had already, just, he had already told me that they were close in the old days of getting, getting to the elevations of what they are now. Well, I, 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 you know, I don't have the technology or the know-how to have recorded that phone call. I wish I could have because it was really very interesting, but it was like two and a half hours. But he, we got to the point where I had, to, you know, I said, well, you know, when you level, you have to level the transit when you're when you're surveying so you're you're shooting a level straight line and he said yes but he said he said but now he said a level is not flat he told me he, he said that phrase about 10 times and i tried to like make him realize how stupid that sounded that level is not flat he said no well the level the level in the transit or when you know any kind of level like a builder's level he says the water in there is going towards the gravity, um, which, you know, I guess if you believe in gravity, it, but to me it's just going down. And, you know, when it's down in a flat place because the surface of water is always flat, then that bubble is going to be in the middle. But he said no, because so as you were surveying, that, that level is not necessarily flat. It's only going towards the gravity, which is the center of the earth. You know, and... If you think about how ridiculous that is. Now, I may try to call this guy back because now I've had some time to think about our conversation. But according to him, I guess that this little one inch uh, air bubble water level thing on the survey transit is adjusting for the curvature of the earth all the way across uh, the United States into the Rocky Mountains. Um, you know, so... He said, no, he says, he says, level is not flat. He said, level is actually the curvature of the earth. So, I mean, how ridiculous is that? But, you know, they, these guys don't even understand because, because they have never really thought about it. I guess this guy somewhere must have learned about it, but they don't even know how much curvature they're supposed to be on the earth. You know, the first guy I talked to when, when I said, well, how did they, how did they allow for the curvature of the earth? And he said, well, you know, it's only a few inches. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, from the, from the coast of the, of the, of the continent to the, to thousand miles inland, I said, it's, it's, it's miles and miles of curvature. And he said, oh, no, no, it's just, it's just a few inches. I said, no, I'm sorry. I've been researching this for a long time and it's eight inches the first mile and squared a mile, you know, et cetera. So that's when he sent me to this guy, you know. And that's when, you know, that's when he had to come up with the fact that level was not flat. That level was actually adjusting for the curvature of the earth because the gravity was pulling that little one-inch uh, water-filled thing.